Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about everyday farmhouse decor. I know you guys are really going to love the DIYs that I have for you today. It is so fun to be able to have some standard staples that have that rustic touch to them. It is part of a farmhouse collaboration and I'll explain more about that as we get into the video. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. This bucket came from Dollar Tree and it has this really cool embossed like pressed tin look to it and I'm just removing the sticker from the base there and I thought this would be really fun to kind of match my home decor. I wanted to kind of have it looked very rustic like it had been sitting out for a long long time. Hopefully that's what I achieve here but I'm just taking my white chalk paint. I feel like chalk paint is going to be your best option on this rather than acrylic paint simply because of that shiny color or the shiny texture finish that the pot already has on it you're going to want to use that chalk paint or at least sand it if you're using acrylic paint so it takes me a couple of coats to get the coverage that I want now this is the fun part of projects like this is you can paint them to match your home decor so I'm going neutral because I feel like that appeals to a wider audience however different colors would be so fun to do if you have different things that you're wanting to try um, to match or things like that. I feel like the colors that they came in were really pretty. There was like a green color and a blue color that I saw. However, I felt that they just didn't quite match my decor. And so it's so fun to see items like this and be able to pick them up, bring them home and match them to your decor. Now after I get all of the layers of the paint dry, it took me about three coats with my chalk paint, I'm just taking some antiquing wax. And you guys, any type of antiquing wax will work just fine. You just want to make sure that it's a water-based antiquing wax. There's several different brands at several different craft stores. Any of them are going to work just fine for you. But I'm just giving this a good coat on here. You can do this as light or as heavy as you want. I really felt like with that pressed tin that it, um, is the finish on this, that this antiquing wax is going to go down into all of the little grooves and everything. So after I get all of this covered completely, you can see I have the entire thing covered with this antiquing wax. I also, uh, as you can see here, I forgot to mention that I did paint about two inches down on the top of the pot there and then I also did go in and finish that with some antiquing wax just so if you were to see inside of the plant that I put in here you don't see that blue color you could paint the entire inside if you wanted but it's not necessary you can see I'm just taking a baby wipe I feel like that is the best a wet paper towel would work just fine I just don't have Anyway, <laughs> long story short, I just keep baby wipes next to my crafting table because it is easy and I buy them in bulk and I use them all the time as I craft. But I'm just gonna wipe away all of, not all of the antiquing wax, but a lot of it, leaving behind all of the little nooks and crannies are gonna have that nice little antiquing wax and it's going to give it a nice little look like it's aged there. I do the same thing on the inside of the pot. Now, what I'll do here, because if this is what's fun about antiquing wax when you're doing this process, is if it's a little too dark for you, you're just going to take a little bit of your original color on your brush here and just go over the top lightly. This is just going to hit all of those raised areas and give them that nice bright color of paint, like that bright white on there. And I'll go over the entire bucket here, or pail, and it really, really does help brighten those raised areas and it keeps that antiquing wax in those pressed areas to have that really aged look to it. Now, I know that some people will comment on why I left the bottom. I did go back and paint the bottom. As you can see here, I also went in with some antiquing wax just to make sure that all of it was covered. Again, if you want to do the inside, you can, but if you're going to have a potted plant inside of it like this, you don't necessarily need that. I think this looks absolutely beautiful. It looks aged. It looks rustic. It does not look like it came from Dollar Tree. It looks like something you would get in a high-end store. I think this turned out beautiful. And this is a staple that you can use all year long, dress it up for different seasons, change your greenery that's in there for the different seasons. I think this is absolutely beautiful. What do you guys think of this one? 
As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of a collaboration playlist. Just look at all of these wonderfully talented creators that I am participating in this playlist with, and every single one of us has a video full of farmhouse DIYs for you. All you have to do is click that link in my description box. I will pin it in my comments as well so it's easy for you to find. It's going to take you over to this playlist and play through all of these wonderful DIYs. If you guys love what you're seeing on my channel, then you are definitely going to love everything else that is on this playlist. If you're new or coming from the playlist, welcome. I am so glad that you're here. I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like what you see, this is what I do on my channel. I love to do farmhouse DIYs as well as all sorts of different types of creating and crafting. Let's get right back into the DIY guys. This project is a remake or a take on a table that I have made before. It is a tiered tray that is a potting, uh, inspired by a potting table. It is one of my most popular DIYs and I found these little pictures at Dollar Tree and I thought they would be perfect because I've been looking for something to kind of simplify the process to make this table. Now you could see the one was kind of falling apart there. I had to glue the sides together. These were the only two that I found in the Dollar Tree I was in that day. If you find these, grab them because they are perfect for this project. Now I did remove the tin there, the little uh, sign that said home. I believe the other one here says friends it looks like. And you can hang on to those, use those for other projects if you want, trash them, whatever you want to do. But it, the glue did leave a little bit of residue behind, so I'm just sanding these. And this is just going to distress them and it really brightens them up and I love the finish that it gives. Painting them would always be an option as well, but you can see how bright these look. I love kind of the almost natural wood color that this gives. It's going to be perfect for our little potting table that we're going to make here. Now I'm trying to keep this as much of Dollar Tree products as I can. I'm using some of the tumbling tower blocks. I want these to be the feet of my table, but I want them to be thicker than just one tumbling tower block. So I'm going to take some wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to make them thicker so that way I can have a thicker uh, base on there. You want to make sure to get these as even as possible so your table doesn't wobble at all. And I had started out using the clamps and realized I really didn't need to do that. I could just just uh, glue them with the wood glue and the hot glue and press them together really tightly with my fingers and that would give me the bond that I needed. I would just have to hold it for a few seconds. I get asked a lot about using hot glue and wood glue together and they're great to uh, use together. It does not compromise either of the glue uh, the way that it adheres. The hot glue actually works as a like temporary clamp while that wood glue dries. So it's totally fine to use those two together. Now I want to have these have a very rustic finish. I want the two layers of my table to have that natural wood color and I want my legs to contrast with a white color and I will distress them with some antiquing wax as well. Again, you could paint this or this in any colors that you wanted. Now where these are picture frames, you can see that I'm just removing that little sawtooth hanger on the back there. I just used some pliers rather than unscrewing it and it worked great to get that off. And then you can see I'm just going in just very lightly dry brushing. So dry brushing is just getting your brush, putting a little bit of your paint or your wax on it. In this case, I'm using antiquing wax and I wipe most of it off. So it's just very, very light as you brush it up and down. It's just going to give that little aged look. Or this is going for a potting shed type of vibe here for this table. Obviously, I want to look like it has been used. It's rustic. And so that's why I'm going heavy with my distressing on this. That's again, just totally optional just giving you some ideas of what you might like to do for your decor but I feel like that very rustic look there really does add that farmhouse touch to it. Now I'm just using some hot glue to glue my Jenga blocks here at the tumbling tower blocks as my feet to the table. Don't worry, I will, I will come back in and remove that little barcode sticker off of there. At one point I realized that, I don't know, I, for some reason when you get in the zone and crafting, like you don't even realize things like that until, you know, minutes later you're going, oh, I can't believe I didn't do that. So now I'm just showing you that I cut some square dowels down and you guys, I found some easels at Dollar Tree uh, that would work perfect to use the legs off of that if you wanna keep this all Dollar Tree. I cut mine to about five and a half inches rounded up to six inches that would be fine I was just trying to work with the length of the wood that I had you could even go five inches it just depends on how far apart you want your two levels but I was just showing you that I did the five and a half inches 
Now I'm painting these to match those tumbling tower blocks. So I'll give each of these a coat of white paint. It takes about two coats. And then I will go back in with the antiquing wax here, as you can see, and I'm just distressing. I pay close attention to the edges of the dowels there uh, because uh, that's where you see that heavy antiquing wax come off of there, off of the brush onto the leg and it really just makes it look dirty, <laughs> which is what we're going for, right? It's a potting table, so we're gonna go with it. And it just is that farmhouse look. And I really do love that chippy farmhouse style. These heat guns are absolutely fantastic to use with your putty knife to get those stickers off. You can see how easily those just pop right off of there. You just heat up that adhesive underneath those stickers. I just put my little putty knife there that I got from Dollar Tree and it just comes right up. I did get this heat gun on Amazon. I'll link it below if you're interested in investing in one. I honestly didn't know how often I would use it because I always just used my hair dryer when I did crafting. But you guys, I use this in almost every single DIY. So if you're looking for something new to add to your crafting game, I would highly recommend one of those heat guns. So now I'm doing the same process with these square dowels as I did with our feet for the table. And I'm just using some hot glue. I just put a bunch of hot glue in the corners there. And then I placed those legs in and that way I would get um, the bond that I needed to. Now to have this glue to the top of our bottom layer, which you'll see what I mean here, I am using a little bit of wood glue with the hot glue to do this. The other table that I made, I did with hot glue, it has held up just great. So, I mean, this isn't gonna get super heavy use. So I feel like the legs using just hot glue would be fine, but gluing it to that surface, this top layer to the second layer, I wanted a little bit more of a bond with that wood glue. So that's why I used a little bit of wood glue there. And you guys, look at how beautiful this table is. This is such a fun table. It's perfect. It's such a great um, and different take on a tiered tray. I get so many compliments on this table that I have. Like I said, this is a little bit of a smaller version of one that I made previous on my channel, but I get so many comments on this and everybody just seems to love it because it's different than what you see everywhere. And I really think that it turned out beautiful and you can use it all year long with all different seasons. At the craft store, you can always find some cute little wood cutouts. These are some cute little birds that I happen to cut out myself. And I'm just gonna show you the process of covering these up or painting them, covering them up, painting them, because I feel like you can find a lot of different wood shapes in the different sections at the craft store. Now I have two sets of these, each set of three, I'm going to do a little bit different. They're gonna look almost the same, but not quite. So I want you to pay attention and let me know which one you liked the best. So this first set here, I'm giving a very thorough coat of paint to, I give two or three actually to give a very good coverage. Now this second set here, I'm doing more of like a messy coat of paint. And so I'm just going kind of haphazardly all over the bird, not necessarily paying attention to getting every nook and cranny, just kind of like a pre-distressing, just giving it a very aged look from the get go with the paint here. Now, and I do this with all three birds in each set. So you can kind of see them taking shape here and tell the difference between each set. Now I have this cute stencil here. I thought this would be a really fun stencil to use on these. Granted, you're gonna see that it's much bigger than my birds and so I can kind of turn it around and do different parts of the stencil on each bird. And I am using one of my new most favorite colors of paint that I've ever used and it is the Vintage Duck, Ed Duck Egg by Dixie Bell Paint. I absolutely love this color and it turns out so beautiful on on these birds. Now I just twisted each bird around on the stencil just to try and decide which part of the design I wanted on them. I wanted them to all look the same but yet different, not be completely cookie cutter. And I just am using a stencil brush with that duck egg on there and just going in an up and down motion. I'll even swirl it in some areas. Just want to make sure that your stencil is down really good before you start swirling it because you don't want any bleed through but I really do love using stencils and I think they're so fun and I like the different looks that you can get. I mean, you can see those different birds up there, how the pattern is different on each of them. 
And the coverage that this Dixie Belle paint gives is phenomenal. I'm This is the first time I've ever used their paint and I'm totally sold. I can't wait to try other colors. If you have any other colors to recommend, definitely let me know down in the comments. This by far is one of my most favorite colors of paint. I think it's just the perfect like grayish, bluish, greenish. I don't know how else to describe it other than that. So after I got my stencil and the paint on, I went ahead and sanded each of the edges. Now to me, this gave it a much more high-end look, something that was more custom. Uh, when you look at these items that you'll see in the different types of boutiques and stores, you'll see that they do have the edges finished like that. And I really just felt like it gave it a really crisp look. I also thought it would be fun to go over the actual stenciling there to give it a little bit more of a faded look. So you can see how that looks there. And then I did the same thing on all of the birds. And I even did the same thing on those birds I gave the messy coat to, but they just kind of had a lighter look. You can definitely tell the difference between the two here. Do you guys have um, a set that you prefer? Uh, I definitely think the messy coat set was faster to make. So if you were going to sell these, then definitely if you like that one, that one was definitely the easiest, but they both have a good place. I think they both turned out really pretty. They have these darling little plaques or little sign blanks at Dollar Tree. And then this is from Hobby Lobby in the wedding section. However, Dollar Tree sells little frames, so feel free to use whatever little vintage frame that you would like to or vintage looking frame. Now I'm just removing the sticker from the back of this sign and I'm just sanding it down. And while I'm doing that, I figure I will sand the front of it. Mostly because when you pick up things from Dollar Tree, there can be scratches on them or they can look pretty um, ununiform with how distressed they are. So I wanted to just kind of get out any blemishes. I wanted any distressing to be intentional and be what I put there. So I'm just going to go over all of this, the ridges, everything, and just kind of brighten this up and give it a really good uniform look. On this little frame here, I'm just going to remove the back completely because I'm not going to need it. I'm going to be gluing it on to this other sign blank that we have. And I'll just remove the pieces inside of it there because I don't need those. It's just like a little plastic film on the inside of it, not glass or anything. And then I'm just going to lightly brush over this with some white chalk paint here to kind of brighten it up so it has a good contrast to the uh, back piece that I'm using, that wood piece. And I thought the white would be a really good contrast depending on what color your background is. You could easily do like a vintage metal look to this would be really cute. But I'm just going over all of the sides. I have just a little, little bit of paint on my brush here and just going all of, over all of those um, edges and details. It really picks that up and I think it really gives it a nice look. Now I'll just give you a little peek at my creative process here. A lot of times when I'm wanting to use some scrapbook paper or something, I will try a few things, kind of set it up, see how it looks, see what I like. That galvanized metal paper I love, but it did not really pop well with the frame. And I do like the look of this leather paper and I felt like the darker one was the best option. So that's what I end up going with. And then I just have some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. This is one they've had for a little while and I've just kind of cut some of the little pieces out of this to put on here and I just kind of haphazardly just make a collage of some of these vintage looking things. Now you could easily put an actual photo in here, a vintage photo of a family member it would be absolutely beautiful a drawing, anything. I mean, the possibilities are endless here. This is just something that I did to kind of go for this vintage farmhouse look. And I'm just using some hot glue around the back of the sign here. And I will just place this paper on here. You can see I place it down and then place the frame so I can center it how I want it centered there and see what I'm doing. Now I have this little key from Dollar Tree here and at first I thought I was maybe gonna put it on there and then I thought no, it actually looks cuter off to the side. So I this is where I'm going to end up gluing it is right there and I thought that that looked really cute. Just another little element there kind of adds that vintage tone. So I just use a little bit of hot glue and I just put that on the back of the key and then I just place that back down kind of how I want it. Make sure it gets a good firm hold there and I just thought that was a really cute contrast to bring that wood tones to the front of the piece where it matches the tones on the back as well. Now I'm just using a tumbling tower block to glue onto the back of my little frame here. Um, if you want to put a little bit of cardboard or poster board or something on the back, cardstock even, to give that a little bit more um, 
heftiness rather than just the paper there. My cardstock paper was pretty or my scrapbook paper was pretty decent. So I felt that it held okay, but just know that you feel welcome to put a little cardboard there if you wanna kind of beef that up a little bit. And then I'm just spinning this around to kind of get it as straight as I can while that glue is still hot so I can manipulate the position of it there. Now, the frame itself looks absolutely darling on that back, but I thought it would be really fun to add a little bit of greenery. This is just the boxwood that comes from Walmart. I pulled off, I think I end up using six pieces in total. I have four here, but then quickly decided I needed a little bit more. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on that. And if you guys have watched my channel, you know I love to make 3D signs like this. And this one's a little different because I don't go around the entire edge of the frame. I'm just doing it on the diagonal. But I love popping out that frame or your centerpiece and giving a little bit of, a little bit of space and then tucking some greenery in behind it. I think it really adds a, such a darling element. It gives it some texture. I just, it's something unique and different that you don't see all the time, but I really do think it looks really nice. So you can see here, I'm just kind of struggling for a minute there to get this little piece in here but I just glue all of those in behind and then hold them and I do the same thing on the bottom to match it so they match on the diagonal. If you have a problem with any little hot glue like webbies or wispies or anything, I just use my heat gun to blast those. Be very careful with your box with that you don't melt it. But this gets rid of any of those little stringy hot glue things that we all absolutely hate as crafters. This is a great way to kind of get them just to kind of melt away into thin air. But look at how beautiful this little sign looks. This is, a, I just think this is adorable. And I feel like if you really did have like a vintage photo in here of somebody in your family or something, how beautiful would that be? How fun would it be to have a, a vintage picture in here of um, like your great grandma and give it to your mom or your grandma or something as a cherished keepsake. I think this turns out beautiful regardless of the picture that you put in the center there. I think that this is such a lovely way to display a cute little frame and I think it has that really rustic and farmhouse touch. What do you guys think of this one? Are you a fan of this one? Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. Every once in a while you need a DIY or a craft or a flip that is super quick and easy but turns out absolutely darling and this is exactly that. I picked this tag up at Hobby Lobby's clearance. It was like less than $2. But you guys, Dollar Tree has tags and so does Dollar General. You can get tags anywhere to make cute little signs like this, but I loved that it had the ticking stripe already on it and I wanted to try and save that. And I also wanted to save this twine because it was a very good quality of twine and I love how they had it tied. And so it was just a matter of untying it and then I was able to pull that off. Now on the back side of this, there was quite a few stickers on there. So I just used my heat gun to zap those and get those off. And then I'm just sanding off the word kitchen. Now this is black paint that this is painted on with. And so it's going to maybe not sand the best, but that is the best way I could think of to get this off of here. And I was just trying to avoid that ticking stripe because I really just wanted to leave it on there. Like I said, I wanted to do as like the most minimal on this, but make it look very different than it did in the beginning. Kind of have the same vibe, but I just didn't need it to say kitchen. So I'm just very carefully taking my brush. This is just some white chalk paint that I have on here. And I'm just going to very carefully go up to that ticking stripe and then paint down towards the um, tie on the sign there on the little tag. That way um, I can keep that ticking stripe and I can cover it up with that paint. And I do go over all of the sides as well and just recoat this with that paint. And it was close enough to the same color that I didn't have to worry about the lines on the ticking stripe. After it dried, I did just rough it up with my emery board here. I went around the edges because I wanted it to have that nice farmhouse worn vibe to it, that look. 
and you can see I'm just going along all of the edges here as well just to kind of sand down that paint. I, there's something so satisfying to me about distressing items like this and having it look I know it's definitely a matter of personal preference, so you're just going to do what works for you when you're doing items like this, but for some reason when I start distressing those edges and you can kind of see some character come out in the pieces, I just feel like they come to life. Now this is a rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree and it was a little long for the tag and I'd had this in mind thinking this is what I wanted to use, but when I pulled it out you can see clearly it was a little bit too long. So I thought, well, maybe if I cut it up and kind of it had a curve to it. So I wanted the curve to look good on there. And this does look cute. If I had gone this direction, I think that would have been fine. But when I was looking at it, it just didn't feel right to me. And so I thought, okay, I'll save that for another project. I have a bunch of different Dollar Tree rub on transfer so I pulled them all out and I found this one that said welcome home and when I placed it on there and it had that little line between the welcome and the home it was just perfect with that ticking stripe I thought that I had found exactly what it needed to be so I just placed that on there I line it up to get it as straight as I can you can always use a ruler if you like to to get things exactly straight I feel like I do a pretty good job just kind of eyeballing it, but I'm just using just a little piece of wood here like a crafting stick or something like that to rub this on. It comes on or it rubs on extremely easy and you just go back and forth until that design is completely and you can see as you're rubbing it, it transferring onto your surface so you'll know when to peel it back. After I peeled that back, I took my little piece of wood here and I just kind of made a couple little scratches into it to kind of give it a little bit of a different aged look. Again, I don't know that I would do that again if I <laughs> was to make this over, but it just in the moment, it felt like something I wanted to do, so I just went with it. And now I'm just taking my brush that I used to paint the tag. The paint in it was fairly dry, and I'm just going over that uh, rub-on transfer. That's going to make it look a little bit aged. It's not going to be so shiny. It's going to look like it was uh, printed directly onto this tag here. And I also go over the ticking stripe as well to give it a little bit of a worn look. And then I'm just going to re-put on this twine here. You guys, this is so simple. I mean, I just fed it back through and tied it exactly the way that it came. That's all it took for this simple little flip. I think it turned out darling. You guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments what you think of this one because I really love this thicker tag. I think it turned out beautiful. I But I think the thin tags that you get like at Dollar Tree or Dollar General, you could make something super cute as well. Embellish it however you want and it's going to be perfect to have as a little accent piece in my decor. It was so much fun getting to do some regular good old staple farmhouse DIYs, ones that you can use every day or through different seasons. It was so much fun creating these. I would love to know which one you guys liked. You like the new table that I made. I'm in love with it. I am so excited to be able to use it uh, in other rooms in my decor. I just am so excited to have a second table. And this one is a little bit of a smaller size than that first one. So I'm excited to see all of the different things that I can do with this one. If you guys make it, come over to Instagram and share with me and let me know how yours turns out because I love to see your creations and how you style the different things. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. Remember to check out that playlist link down in my description box and pinned in my comments. You guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.